Prusa Slicer 2.6 is now in beta, so it's almost here as a stable release for everyone to start using. And there's so many reasons why you might want to check it out. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, Prusa Slicer 2.6 is getting even closer to a stable release. And they're adding all kinds of new features that you might want to check out. Now, I have been using Slick 3R or Prusa Slicer since I started 3D printing many years ago. So it is my preferred slicer, but they just keep adding features and some of the ones that are coming out for 2.6 are really impressive. There is one that sticks out that I want to use in a lot of my projects and that is organic supports. Now if you FDM 3D print, you know sometimes you have to deal with supports. You can't just print in midair. So if there's a large overhang, you're going to have to have some sort of material to support that until the print completes. And they can be pretty challenging to remove. Now with organic supports, things have completely changed. They use a lot less material, they're a lot easier to remove, and they work a lot better in a lot of different scenarios, but not everyone. So today we're going to check them out, see how they work, see when you want to use them, when you might not want to use them, and some ideas I have to improve this feature altogether. Now a lot of people are going to say that tree supports and cura have been around a long time, but they're not quite the same thing. And that's one of the biggest things I want to touch on in this video today. But let's take a look at organic supports real quick. With this model I have right here, you might have seen it at the Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Festival. This is Dragon Skull, a model available over on printables.com by Printed Into Existence. I thought this was a great model to show off the organic supports. I did this on my MMU too. So we just have black PLA for the model and white PLA for the supports, so I could show them off a little bit easier. Not only are these supports very functional, but they actually look really cool while they're holding on to the model. And they're very easy to remove. But we'll touch on that just a little bit later. And I can't say enough about any designer in our space of these models. They all do a great job, but please go check out this model over on Printables, printed into existence. Very cool, much appreciated that they put this on printables for us to use. So here's our model that we brought into Prusa Slicer. Now you can see it's just kind of floating here. I have increased the size of this to 250% just so I can show you a little bit better. The one I printed is the same size. But you can kind of see that it's floating a little bit. And if we slice it, we can run down through the layers and kind of get an idea of what's actually touching the build plate. So not much just the corners of the jawline there. So back to the plater, I'm just gonna use the lay flat tool to pick just a little bit better section to put down on the bed. We're not gonna have a lot of contact because this is an organic model, but that's what makes it so cool to show off those organic supports. So now you can see we still don't have much contact, but it is just a little bit flatter. And again, doing this so you can see the difference with supports off and on. So now for traditional supports. If we just come up here and do support build plate only and slice again, you can see our traditional support material is completely covering this model. Again, if we go back down through the layers, you can see even how much support is in the center of the model. And traditional supports, they can be pretty solid. They use a lot of material, as you can see and pretty hard to remove. They also don't leave all that great of a surface where they separate. Now from here, if we switch to organic supports by going to print settings, support material, style, organic. You can adjust a few parameters here, but the default one's gonna work really well for a lot of models. We'll go back and take a look at the print and re-slice. Here are our organic supports. You can see they're much different than the traditional supports just on how they form around the print. But if we go back through that layer by layer, we'll stop somewhere here in the middle. One of the most important things to know about organic supports is they print in vase mode. You can see there's only a couple of perimeters there. It only prints as much as it needs to form that support. And because of this, it leaves the outside of the model much cleaner, as well as makes it so much easier to remove and uses less material. 
So on a lot of different shapes that you're going to 3D print, these are going to be a must have going forward. We can continue down through the model just so you can see how those supports work on different layer heights and different textures. And given the way those organic supports work, it makes them so much easier to remove. They pretty much just collapse. Again, this was printed on my Prusa Mark III with the MMU-2 in two separate colors just so I could show you the difference in between supports and model. But with the base that these supports get printed with, just removing it off the flex sheet, depending on the model, everything is going to stay intact. But basically, you can just start tearing these away. Remember, this is PLA. It's a very rigid filament. So be careful, you're still gonna to wanna to use your pliers, but you don't have to pick it off the model like you do standard supports. So the bulk of the support is off, and I did this in two color so that you could see it better, but also so you could see any traces that were left. You can still see some white filament here. You can pick it off, you can go around and clean it up. The supports aren't perfect by any means, but compared to the rectilinear supports we're used to, this process is so much easier. And you can see on the contact down here, just how much nicer it is where those supports were. And the organic supports are nowhere near perfect. I'm just stating that they're way better than the traditional supports a lot of us are used to. Also, there's a few tricks with every process that you can do to make them even better. For instance, on this one, I used PLA for both the part and the supports. If you have the opportunity to have a multi-material machine, using PETG as the support or the model and PLA, vice versa, makes them so much easier to separate. So give that a try. Now again, organic supports don't work for every part. So let's take a look at that side of things. So as you saw on this model, you can see down in here in the dragon's eye, for instance, these types of features where they have to be supported here at the top, these are great for organic supports because you can build them really quickly. You can build them tall to support those features. But what about longer shapes that have an overhang? Let's throw one together really quick so I can show you the difference on different types of parts. We'll just head into Fusion. We're just gonna make a really simple part here. We'll just do a rectangle, and then I'm gonna do one on top of that that's a little bit smaller, and we'll just extrude them out. So we have a part like this with an overhang. Now at this point, you could just print them on this end. No big deal. But what if the part was just a little bit more complicated? Let's say for some reason, you needed a round part here on the other side. And better yet, this part that sticks out on this side has some sort of complicated overhang. So I have no idea what you would use this part for, but it's going to prove my point here in a moment. So let's bring it into Prusa Slicer. And here's our part. Remember, we have this overhang here. We also have one down here. And this type of long overhang is probably not the best for organic supports. So let's turn those on really quick. Let's go ahead and slice. We already have them set up from the last model. And you can see the support over here did a great job. It's gonna be able to build that quickly and support that overhang. But down here, We'll just go through the layers again so you can see the supports. You can see it has to build all these tiny organic supports 
all these little columns, and then it has to put rectilinear on top of that to be able to support this ledge successfully. So this is an area here where traditional supports would be a lot better. But let's turn those on. So you can see the ledge now with the traditional supports on. It's a much simpler structure to be able to support that ledge. But then as we move up to that crazy overhang, you can see all the material it has to lay down to support that. So in a perfect world, we'd be able to use organic supports on some and traditional supports on others. Because not every print is going to benefit from either one. So just like with everything, we're going to have to have a balance in between the types of supports that we use. And that's what I look for the Prusa team to add next. Some sort of part modifier we can use, like we use support blockers and enforcers today, to be able to change from traditional supports over to organic, and then we'll have the full package. Based on whatever part you want to create, now you can support it correctly. But if you want to try Prusa Slicer 2.6, which I strongly urge you to, Here's the easiest way to do it. And I only mention this process because Prusa Slicer 2.6 is still in beta. So you can't just go to the Prusa site, go over to help, drivers and firmware, and pull it down from drivers and apps quite yet. We're still on 2.5.2 as our stable release. But 2.6 is more than functional and has a lot of great features that you want to check out. The easiest way to do that just head over to the Prusa GitHub. Prusa GitHub. Prusa Slicer is available as a repository. And then head to the releases page. The first one on top here should be the newest one. They have listed as beta and pre-release. This is the 2.6 version that you're going to want to try right now. If you open up assets, you can pull down the file you need, depending on the OS that you're on. If you're on Windows, just grab the zip file, right click and extract all, and just open up the folder and double click on the PrusaSlicer.exe file. A lot of times beta software, they're not set up with all the security they need, certificates, that's going to give you an error from some Windows machines. But Prusa Slicer, go ahead and run it anyway. Then you're ready to start trying out all the new features. And if you're one of those folks that don't like to try alpha and beta software, I'm right there with you. Most of the time, I'm more than patient enough to wait for the stable release. Trying software when it's mid-development, it can be kind of a pain at times. But there's so many features coming to 2.6, you might want to go ahead and jump the line and start using it now. So to make this video just a little bit more interesting, let's go ahead and go to a time lapse of the Dragon Skull being printed with those supports in the alternate color so you can see just how they're laid down. So there it is, Prusa Slicer 2.6 is well on its way, and they're adding all kinds of different features in this new version. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But I wanted to show organic supports to you because it has already helped me greatly in my 3D printing projects, and it's open source software free for you to use, so you might as well go ahead and give it a try. Hopefully you found this interesting, that is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.